Right. Hello. Good day, everybody. Today is Tuesday, March the 14th. Wow, friends, this message is going to be absolutely glorious. <laughs> Welcome to my incredibly important message about the significance of Jerusalem in the end times according to the latest news updates, the latest public opinion. No, according to the word of God, I'm going to be sharing with you today, friends, some utterly astonishing biblical scriptures that you may never have considered before. If you're a regular visitor to my channel, then I'm expecting that you already know much about what I'm going to talk about today. But if you're new, I hope that this message blesses you as it does me, just preparing you to show you. Jerusalem has a rich and a complex history. As we know, that spans thousands of years with a very troubled history, even to the present day. Check out the latest news. I'm doing a Bible prophecy news update this week, and I'm also working on a follow up to my message that I did there, Messiah 2030. So there's two more videos I'm working on this week. Bear that in mind as well as having to keep an eye on the latest developments in the Middle East as well. I just want you to know, friends, that if we don't understand the significance of Israel, Jerusalem, according to the Bible, in the end time perspective, we're not going to be able to understand the rest of the prophetic narrative for the end times. It's really that simple. We know that Jerusalem holds a crucial role in the Lord's plan for redemption for his people and indeed the whole world. So in this video we'll explore these amazing prophetic scriptures that are clear as day about how God's relationship with Israel and Jerusalem is key to understanding God's purposes and his plans for the future of the world. Yes, the destiny of the world is tied to the state of Israel. I'm talking about the spiritual state of Israel. I'm say I'm going to save this for when I do my prophecy update. Keep an eye on the region. Be prayerful, friends. We're going to dive straight into the Word of God. This is for those of you who would love the Bible, who love Bible prophecy, who are diligently seeking the truth and you don't know where to start. The best place for this particular message regarding Jerusalem and Israel is the Old Testament, the Old Prophets, and we're going to begin in the book of Isaiah, even though I've got the book of Joel, the book of Ezekiel, Zephaniah, and even Revelation to go through today. So grab yourself a hot drink, a notepad, and the Bible, even though I've got the scriptures up on the screen. Let's begin. Now, we're going to start in the book of Isaiah around chapter 41, because from this point onwards to the end of the book of Isaiah, remember there's 66 chapters in the book of Isaiah, just as the Bible has 66 books. Now, you can argue about that in your own private time if you want. Please don't argue about that on my channel. We're going to start around this portion from chapter 41 onwards, because at this stage, in the book of Isaiah, there's a prophetic narrative that begins to be spoken of regarding the Lord and his relationship with his people. And you know, it's a very troubled region, friends. But it's also a very difficult relationship that the Lord has with his people. But there's light at the end of the tunnel. Oh my goodness, is this glorious, you guys. I woke up this morning and this was the first thing that was burning on my heart. Like, a, you know, when your heart is stirring. I had other plans, other things I wanted to share. You know, we have our own plans and stuff, but we've got to make sure that we commit everything to the Lord. We don't lean on our own understanding in every aspect in life, right? So, without further ado, let's get started, friends. We're going to read from the very first verse. Let the Word of God explain itself, right? 
Keep silence before me, O coastlands, and let the people renew their strength. Let them come near, then let them speak. Let us come near together for judgment. I've got a wonderful, wonderful song that I want to share with you at the end of this message today. It's going to bless your socks. Glory. Hallelujah. All right. I'm so excited. I can't control myself right now. Holy Spirit, please help me. So, like I said, Jerusalem is a very troubled region. It always has been. But also, it's currently a troubled region. We know that the Palestinian campaign, that movement, want to take over East Jerusalem, divide the city up and take half of it for themselves. So we know we're headed in that direction. We know it's, it's going to happen. We know, according to the scriptures, that the city will be divided, the people will come under attack and there will be a great tribulation coming. When all this stuff happens, it's important that you and I, lovers of the Lord, understand the purposes of this region what does God have planned for it for his people for the land because in that is the world's salvation there's a reason why things are happening the way they happen but if we don't understand the spiritual significance we're left in limbo we're confused everything's a bit blurry we can't make sense of things right having said that let's carry on the Lord has certain um, specific judgments for Israel, for Jerusalem as a people, chastisements, judgments, which are not in good light. But there's another side to it. And I want us to focus on the other side, the glorious side, the glory that is coming in the days in the future. Hallelujah. Let the word of God be clear. Who raised up one from the east? Who in righteousness called him to his feet? Who gave the nations before him and made him rule over kings? Who gave them as the dust to his sword, as driven stubble to his bow? Who pursued them and passed safely by the way that he had not gone with his feet? Who has performed and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, am the first, and with the last I am he. What did the Lord Jesus say in the book of Revelation? In chapter 1, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, right? This is the same God speaking here. The coastlands saw it and feared. The ends of the earth were afraid. They drew near and came. Everyone helped his neighbour and said to his brother, Be of good courage. So the craftsman encouraged the goldsmith. He who smooths with a hammer inspired him who strikes the anvil, saying, It is ready for the soldering. Then he fastened it with pegs that it might not totter. But you, Israel, are my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen. Ja the Lord chose Jacob and not Esau. The Lord loves Jacob and hates Esau. So don't be an Esau. Be a Jacob. The descendants of Abraham, my friend, you whom I have taken from the ends of the earth. I wish... <laughs> this is the truth, the Abrahamic truth. The Lord has an election. He has a specific covenant with those whom, whom he elects. And to them he's promised an inheritance. This is the Abraham Accords, according to the Lord. Not the Abraham Accords that we witness today being forged in the Middle East with the Arabs and Israel today. No, 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 no. That, my darling friends, is an abomination. They're reinventing the wheel. If Lord Almighty says that he has specific covenants, he has specific election, who are we to go against it? Who are we to revise it? God forbid. Lord have mercy. Would we ever consider doing such a thing? But there are people out there who are doing it today, friends. Unwise, foolish, carnal. You who I have taken from the ends of the earth and called from its farthest regions and said to you, You are my servant. 
I have chosen you and have not cast you away. You see, if we want to be a part of the Abrahamic covenant or the Abrahamic accord, we have to come into covenant with the, the Messiah of Israel, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Only in him are all the nations of the earth blessed through the Abrahamic covenant. That's the criteria, the only criteria available. And the Lord's made a way. He's made a way available for everybody. Every Tom, Dick and Harry, Jew and Gentile, slave and free, man and woman, poor and rich, can all come in because the Lord is here with open arms welcoming as many who can hear his voice. But we have to come in through Jesus. He's the only way, the only truth, the only life. That's the way he's set up. I have chosen you and have not cast you away. He's talking to Jacob. Okay. It might look like the Lord is done with these people. With the nation. With the land. What's happening in Israel today is all prophetic, friends. All of it is a cup of trembling a heavy burdensome stone. All the nations who try to interfere will surely be burdened and torn into shreds. The Lord has a destiny for these people. It might not look like it's all going to go down well. Well, in fact, it's not going to go down well. We know it already. Yes. It's because the Lord has certain judgments, chastisements because of the people's rebellion. You see, that's the problem of the whole world. Humankind, human nature has this issue. It's called rebellion, isn't it? It's sin. We are all like sheep, gone astray, each one going to his own way. And because of this, the Lord laid on Jesus Christ the iniquity of us all, all of us. But he made a way. He made it possible. There goes my commentary, my side note. Verse 10, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Behold, all those who were incensed against you, angry, dis disgusted and vexed, all those who were incensed against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. They shall be as nothing. And those who strive with you shall perish. You shall seek them and not find them. Those who contend with you, those who war against you, shall be as nothing, as a non-existent thing. This is in the future. This time is coming. It is surely coming. But before it does, we know Jacob must go through very troublesome times. And with Jacob, so with the believers in Jesus Christ, go through difficult times ahead. Because the enemy of our soul despises us. Do you understand? He despises us. He loathes us. The Lord God will deal with our enemies, friends. We must submit under the mighty hand of God. And in due time, he will exalt his people. This is the way he does it. So we humble ourselves. Yes, we get on our knees. We humble ourselves. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Fear not, you worm, Jacob, you men of Israel. I will help you, says the Lord. Israel's help is only found in the Lord. He's the only help for Israel. Unfortunately, majority of the people in Israel are secularists, atheists agnostics whatever there's only a remnant a handful of believers in messiah in israel who understand that the lord has a purpose and everything that is happening is happening according to his purpose right but largely israel is a secular state it wants to be a jewish state unfortunately it's nowhere near being a jewish state this is all religious politics nonsense. I will help you, says the Lord and your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make you 
into a new threshing sledge with sharp teeth. Wow. You shall thresh the mountains and beat them small. It doesn't look like that today, does it? Hardly. What a contrast. And make the hills like chaff. Wow. This is not going to be possible by their own might and by their military power, by the Israeli defence forces. Absolutely no way. No. That's the arm of the flesh. This deliverance that is coming, this restoration that is coming, is coming by the hand of the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, and in Him alone. Let the world know this. The poor and needy seek water, but there is none. Their tongues fail for thirst. I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. Who is He? He is the God of Israel. That's just the way it is, whether you like it or not. He is the God of Israel. He's the God of all the world. Absolutely, he is. But if I keep doing my commentary, we'll be here for a long time. All right, let me just stay with the program. Let me stay with the Lord's program. I will open the rivers in desolate heights and fountains in the midst of the valleys. <laughs> I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. Isn't this glorious, you guys? I will plant in the wilderness where nothing grows. It's all dead beet, dried out in the desert heat. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar and the acacia tree, the myrtle and the oil tree. I will set in the desert the cypress tree and the pine and the box tree together. This is referring to people's. Ethnic, ethnic groups, peoples, the trees are not just the trees, even though that's possible, but understand the analogy and also the literal, what is meant to be spiritually um, understood is spiritual, but what is literally meant to be understood is understood literal. Does that make sense? Okay. That they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this. Who? Who's done it? The Zionist entity, all those Zionist nations, the USA, Britain, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Israel. No, the hand of the Lord will do this and the Holy One of Israel has created it. And now the Lord goes to condemn the pagan idolatry. Now, the reason why he will do this at the end is because currently... Futility of idols, right, is the status quo today. The world over, chasing after their idols, their pagan objects of worship. This is why chastisement comes to Israel, to his people. This is why the Lord sends the enemy to come in to whip them into shape for judgment. But that doesn't mean he would do away with them. You understand? You better understand, friends. This is important. This is how we understand how to get a balance and perspective regarding the people and the land. I always say the land because the land of Israel is highly prophetic. The covenant of Abraham, remember? It includes the land allotments. There's land allotments promised to the 12 tribes and those allotments... <laughs> will be given to them in the future. Yes, that is the Greater Israel Project, according to the Bible. Not according to the conspiracy theories that are out there, left, right, and whatever. Present your cases, the Lord. Bring forth your strong reason, says the King of Jacob. Let them bring forth and show us what will happen. Let them show the former things, what they were, that we may consider them, or know the latter end of them, or declare to us things to come. Show the things are to come hereafter, that we may know that you are gods. Yes, do good or do evil, that we may be dismayed and see it together. Indeed, you are nothing, and your work is nothing. I love the way the Lord just gets to the point. Indeed, you are nothing. You see, the futility of worshipping idols, the actual objects are nothing. They have no value, no spiritual significance. They're made and fashioned with human effort. And your work is nothing. He who chooses you is an abomination. 
how much more do I want to read of this? Let, let me go to my Bible because I have so many chapters to go through. I'm in Isaiah 41. I'm going to go in my Bible here. Okay. Verse 26. Let's carry on. Who has declared from the beginning that we may know? And former times that we may say he is righteous. Surely there is no one who shows. Surely there is no one who declares. Surely there is no one who hears your words. The first time I said to Zion, look, there they are. And I will give to Jerusalem one who brings good tidings. For I looked and there was no man. I looked among them, but there was no counsellor. Who, when I asked of them, could answer a word. Indeed, they are all worthless. Their works are nothing. Their moulded images are wind and confusion. Wow. He hasn't finished. Let's go on. Behold my servant, Isaiah 42. You've really got to read the whole book of Isaiah. It's the mini Bible, 66 chapters, and it really does declare the full gospel message, if you're paying attention. I don't like to cut out chapters, but we're going to read as much as we can. I've got Isaiah 42, chapter 43, 45, 49, 50, 51, 50. My goodness, you guys, we're going to read the remaining of the book. Do you have patience to sit through it with me? <clears throat> Behold my servant whom I uphold, my elect one in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. Glorious. He will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. Not only does he care for his people Israel, but we are also his people, the Gentiles. You see, God has created the world, everything, everyone. He's our creator. He didn't just create a specific people groups, but he chose them to reveal himself to the world. Does that make a sense? A light to the nations. But they're trying to do it right now, aren't they, in their carnal nature? Human effort is futile, friends. He will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. Who is he? This is the Messiah. He will not cry out, nor raise his voice, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and smoking flax he will not quench. He will bring forth justice for truth. He will not fail, nor be discouraged. Till he has established justice in the earth, and the coastland shall wait for his law. When he returns, when the king returns, the kingdom will be here. The king in his kingdom will have a set of laws by which he will govern the nations. This law will be present. Yes, it will be. It's going to be new. It will be different to the law of the old, old covenant. It will be glorious. Thus says the God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread forth the earth and that which comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness and I will uphold your hand. I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the Gentiles. You see, if any Muslims are listening to me, the Lord is a light to you. He's there as a massive beacon of light saying, here I am, I'm right here. I'm the light you've been looking for all your life. Come out of the darkness and come to me. Simply come, just come to me. I'm the light, come out of the darkness. You see, he's opened his arms to the whole world, to everybody. But his destiny, tying Israel's destiny, is meant for the whole world. I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. I pray that I'm I'm relaying what the Lord has revealed to me to you accurately. As a light to the Gentiles, to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison, to those who sit in darkness from the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another. He's a jealous God. Why should the Lord share his glory with another? God forbid. He is the Lord, there is nobody else. He will not share his glory with another. It will never happen. Which is why he's indignant and angry against his people when they chose to forsake him and go 
after other gods, which caused the divorce. You know, the Lord is a husband. He divorced his people. They broke his heart. They betrayed him through their unfaithfulness. So if you're out there and you've experienced unfaithfulness, that your heart's been broken by the very one that promised faithfulness to you, till death do us part, the Lord understands. You see, he understands us so much better than we can ever imagine. He knows everything that you're going through, everything he understands. And not only that, the Lord Jesus became man. The word of God becomes flesh. He knows exactly what you're going through. He knows your trials. He knows the temptations. But behold, he has overcome. He has overcome. He's a victor. He has the victory. And we are now to glory in his triumph. Amen. He will not give his glory to another. Why should he? He will never do that. Nor my praise to carved images. Behold, the former things have come to pass, the new things I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. And I'm reading to you the words of the Lord. That before these things happen, the new things I declare, before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Praise to the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. This new song is a song of deliverance. And you'll find this song mentioned in the book of Revelation, the song of Moses. Yes, the song of Moses is also mentioned in the book of Revelation, which is the song of deliverance. The deliverance of the Lord will finally be realized in its spiritual fullness, in its um, practical fullness <laughs> entirely. And he's praised from the ends of the earth. You who go down to the sea and all that is in it. I'm trying my best to stick with the book of Isaiah. Rather than going in, in various other books. Like the book of Revelation. Because I cover those heavily. I can do more messages. Just let me know if you're interested. I will do that. But there's a lot of us that don't spend enough time in these books. In our, um, Isaiah for example. We just don't. I don't know what it is. But we need to. We'll understand the rest of the scriptures if we understand the older prophets and what they actually declared because the word interprets the word let the wilderness and its cities lift up their voice the villages that cedar inhabits let the inhabitants of Selah sing let them shout from the top of the mountains let them give glory to the lord and declare his praise in the coastlands the lord shall go forth <laughs> here we go come on lord jesus hallelujah glory be to the lamb of god the mighty man of war. The Lord shall go forth like a mighty man. He shall stir up his zeal like a man of war. You know, if the Lord God, the Lord, <laughs> who is a mighty man of war, can stir up himself, can you not stir up yourself for the Lord? Let's be zealous for the Lord, you guys. The joy of the Lord gives us strength. And this is where I get my strength. I tell you, I've been so weary lately. I've been bogged down. I've been multitasking. I've had this awful pain in my my head. For the past, I think it's been three days. There's this sharp burning sensation on my left side of my head. It's a nerve pain. And it's been bothering me. You know how anxiety and fear creeps in. Like, oh Lord, what if I die in my sleep? What if something happens? I've got so much to do, Lord. Please don't take me out right now. We've got to fulfill our commission that we've been given, right? But then this word of the Lord comes to me this morning. Oh, Jerusalem, on your walls, oh Jerusalem, I have set watchmen. That was the, the verse that came to my mind this morning. Out of the blue. On your walls, O oh Jerusalem, I have set watchmen. <laughs> and that was it. That's all it took, friends. That's all it took. And then I stirred myself up. He shall. <laughs> Hold on just a moment, friends. Think about that for a minute. How glorious is that? It's starting to rain here, which is wonderful. We all need the rain. 
We need the latter rain, friends. <laughs> we need the latter rain. That scripture that I'm talking to you about, I just wanted to make sure that I've got it up. It's in Isaiah 62. We're coming there. Bear with me. You've got to hold on. We're in 42. We're getting there, okay? He shall stir up his zeal like a man of war. He shall cry out, yes, shout aloud. He shall prevail against his enemies. You know the Lord has enemies. You know that, right? He's got the one enemy, the dragon. But he has enemies on the earth. The enemies on the earth are those who serve Satan and his purposes. The Lord has enemies and his enemies are our, are our enemies. And the enemies of Israel and the enemies of Jerusalem are the enemies of the Lord. Thus they are our enemies. Yes, makes sense. I have held my peace a long time. Look at this, remarkable. How many of you read these scriptures? Tell me if you feel what I'm feeling right now. I have this fire burning in my heart, friends. It's glorious to me that the Lord will pull me out of Islam in the darkness, sitting there, this nobody, the firstborn in my family, and reveal the Messiah to me. And now I, I can't, I just, I can never get over the fact that he's given me a desire to stand up, to be a watchman on the walls for Jerusalem. It's astonishing. It's a miracle. This is a miracle, you guys. And he's doing this more and more in the Middle East. More of them are coming to the Lord. More of them, friends. The Lord is doing marvellous things in the earth. It's not all it's not all doom and gloom. You just got to be careful what you read, you know. We can get bogged down, weary. But the enemy likes to weary the saints. He wears us out so we're no good to serve the Lord. I have held my peace a long time, says the Lord. This is the Lord saying this. I have been still... And restrained myself. Wow. Now I will cry like a woman in labour. Picture that scene. I will pant and gasp at once. I will lay waste the mountains and hills. And dry up all the vegetation. I will make the rivers coastlands. And I will dry up the pools. I will bring the blind by a way they did not know. I will lead them in paths they have not known. I will make darkness light before them. And crooked places straight. These things I will do for them and not forsake them. This is why I love the Lord. Look at him friends. There's nobody like the Lord. There's nobody like the Holy One of Israel. The Lord of hosts. The God of Israel, there is no other God like him. Forsake your gods and come in repentance and come to the Lord Jesus. Come now, today, right now. March the 14th, 2023. Come today. There's no, you're not going to find nobody else like him. Nobody. They don't exist. He takes care of the blind. He reveals his truth. He wipes away your tears. He cleanses you from all your sins. He gives you a new heart, a new spirit. He clothes us with the robes of righteousness. He gives us this beautiful armour to wear. He redeems us from the pit, from destruction, which is where the world is headed. All the world. I mean, think of it. Everyone from the beginning are all under condemnation we're already condemned friends but jesus is the way out he's the way out of the condemnation everyone's damned to hell we are all damned to go to hell unless we call upon the name of the lord there is nobody else i'm, I'm gonna break it to you plain there is nobody else he's the only savior he's the only redeemer he's the ultimate superhero superman you know he is the ultimate there is nobody else there's nobody coming to save you you can't save yourself you have to turn to the lord and today is the day that's for somebody i don't know who that was for let me know if it was you 
they shall be turned back, they shall be greatly ashamed, those who trust in carved images, who say to the moulded images, you are our gods. Hear, you deaf, and look, you blind, that you may see. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger whom I send? Who is blind as he who is perfect? What an anomaly. I love the wording of this. It's just so peculiar wording, friends. It's a mystery. Just like how Jesus would give parables, and only some were able to understand the parables, not everybody was able to understand the parables. <laughs> look, if the Lord has made something secret, there's no point trying to work it out, right? <laughs> but if it's given to you, to understand that's another thing pray that the lord will help us understand lord give me understanding when you speak in mystery words mysterious words give me understanding lord help me to see things the way you see them reveal to me truths and wonders in your word oh god amen seeing many things but you do not observe opening the ears but he does not hear now the lord will continue on showing their foolishness of their rebellion. How long is this chapter? <clears throat> he against whom we have sinned, for they were not to walk in his ways, nor were they obedient to his law. So his fury is to chastise them because they don't obey. They ignore him. They turn away from him. They go running after other idols. However, it's a two-edged sword, the book of Isaiah. The good, the bad, the ugly. You know, the Lord doesn't hide these things. It's everything. Everything is out in the open. Transparency. You know, he doesn't have to do it, does he? He's the Lord. But he gives us transparency. He wants the world to know why he does what he does. But now, that says the Lord. After all that, after all the bad things, right? Who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. He's repeating what he said in the beginning. Regardless of what you've done, never mind all the um, heartache, the rebellion, the unfaithfulness. Never mind that, because I will deal with that. I've provided a way of atoning for the sins that you've committed, O Israel. Regardless, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Nor shall the flames scorch you. He's the same one. Who protected the saints of old. If you read in the book of Daniel. When they were given to the flames. For I am the Lord your God. The Holy One of Israel your Saviour. Who is the Saviour of Israel friends? Ask yourself. There's only one Saviour right? Who is he? What's his name? He has a name. Jesus in English. Yeshua in Hebrew. Yesu. Masi in Urdu. He is the Holy One of Israel, the Saviour. There is nobody else. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in your place, since you were precious in my sight. If there are those who are precious in the sight of the Lord, be careful. Be careful with what you say to those people who are precious in the sight of the Lord. You have been honoured and I have loved you. Look to you. Could you read these words and not be amazed? Therefore I will give men for you and people for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your descendants from the east. Wow. The descendants of Israel are in the east. Yes, and in, and in the west and in the north and in the south. I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar, my daughters from the ends of the earth, everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory. 
I have formed him, yes, I have made him. Bring out the blind people who have eyes and the deaf who have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? No one, only the Lord. Let them bring out their witnesses that they may be justified or let them hear and say it is truth. You are my witnesses, says the Lord. How glorious is that? And my servant whom I have chosen that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. How many times did Jesus praise the Gentiles for their faith because they believed him? It pleases him to know that his followers, those who are called by his name, just simply believe him. You know, we believe so much stuff in the world out there. You've got all these influencers on social media telling you what to believe in and people suck it up and believe it, right? The Lord wants us to believe him because he's the Lord. He means well. He doesn't mean to harm us. And my servant whom I have chosen that you may know and believe me and understand I am he. Who is he? Before me there was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord. This is all about Jesus. And beside me there is no saviour. I have declared and saved, I have proclaimed, and there was no foreign God among you. Therefore you are my witnesses, says the Lord, that I am God. Indeed, before the day was, I am he. And there is no one who can deliver out of my hand. I work and who will reserve it. We've got more to go through. Stay with me. I hope you're enjoying this, friends. The scriptures I'm going to read in the coming uh, chapters are even more glorious, if they even can be more glorious, if there's such a thing. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, is our Saviour. He's the one, right? For your sake, I will send to Babylon and bring them all down as fugitives the chaldeans who rejoice in their ships i am the lord your holy one the creator of israel your king why don't you understand people look to me and be saved all you ends of the earth thus is the lord who makes a way in the sea like the red sea a path through the mighty waters who brings forth the chariot and the horse and the army and the power Let's scroll on because we've got a lot to read. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Because if you thought the Lord parting the waters was amazing, he's going to do more amazing things and it's coming in the future. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beast of the field will honour me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. He's not talking just to mere beasts, creatures. There are those who are considered unclean, according to the Jewish mindset, like the Gentiles were considered unclean. But there are those that the Lord is using as analogies, beasts, jackals, that will actually honour him. You see? So, when the Lord begins a work in somebody, don't judge the book by its cover. Because you don't know the end result of this deliverance work that the Lord is doing in somebody. They might look like outcasts, or the unclean, or the unlikely group of people that the Lord will bring salvation to. You know, get off your high horse, right? To give drink to my people, my chosen. This people I have formed for myself. They shall declare my praise. This people. <clears throat> UK, France and dozen other EU members call on Israel to halt East Jerusalem dispossession. Everyone's got something to say about this place, isn't it? But the Lord has said, he's created this people for himself, that they may declare his praise. And they will. They will do it. Now the Lord says he's pleading with the unfaithful Israel. But you have not called upon me, O Jacob, and you have been weary of me, O Israel. Can you imagine being weary of the Lord, getting tired with him? But if you're true and if you're honest with yourself, how many of you get weary when you want to go and pray? Oh, I've got to go and pray. Oh, 
I pray every day. Today I missed the prayer. Oh, it's okay, you know. I got to. It's a privilege and an honor to go before the Lord. What an honor! What a privilege! That the blood of Jesus would make a way for us to go boldly now to the throne of grace, to the Father, freely. What an honor! What a privilege! He knows when we feel that way. But you've been weary of me, O Israel. Just the heartache. The, how much heartache does the Lord have to go through, you guys? Being God Almighty. You have not brought me the sheep for your burnt offerings, nor have you honoured me with your sacrifices. I have not caused you to serve with grain offerings, nor wearied you with incense. You have brought me no sweet cane with money, nor have you satisfied me. You just haven't been bothered lately, Israel. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. Put me in remembrance. Let us contend together. State your case that you may be acquitted. For your first father sinned, and your mediators have transgressed against me. Therefore I will profane the princes of the sanctuary. I will give Jacob to the curse and Israel to reproaches. That's the, that is the sad consequences of this rebellion. You see? As it is with Israel, so it is with the rest of us. It's, it's not one rule for them and one rule for us. No. So take heed. Do I want to read on in 44? Where am I now? I'm in chapter 44. I want to go to chapter... I mean, you got to do your own study. you got to go through the whole book, friends. Will you do that? I challenge you. Do the whole book of Isaiah. Let's go to chapter 45. Oh my goodness gracious, you guys. This is a very long chapter, but we're going to read as much of it as we can. Thus is the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, hmm, the Persian, whose right hand I have held to subdue nations before him. <clears throat> and the Lord continues to say this, that he is God, there is none beside me. He can raise up Cyrus to do his work if he wills. Thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his maker, ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands. You command me, I have made the earth and created man on it. I, my hand stretched out the heavens. Hallelujah. This is a command for him, for the for him, Cyrus, to let his exiles go free. And he repeats that he is the only saviour to Israel. You see, the Lord will reveal this. You remember the first believers in the Lord Jesus were Jews? Let's not forget. Some people get so self-righteous, all the Jews rejected him. No, they didn't. How can we categorically say the Jews rejected him? They didn't. The first believers were Jews. But a lot of them did. There were the Pharisees as well, and the scribes, the Sadducees, and what have you. There were those who were carnal, and they wanted to remain in their flesh. And when the believers were coming to faith in Jesus, the Jewish believers, even the Gentiles included, they were told to conform back to the old ways. And Paul really had had a, he had his work cut out, didn't he, if you read the books, of the, his letters, especially the book of Galatians. It's very clear, he's the God of the whole earth, but he selected a people groups. Okay, now, let me go on to show you. We're going to read chapter, let's go to chapter, oh my goodness, there's so much to read. Let's go to 52, my darling friends. Who else goes through the whole book, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I can't, can I? I mean, I would love to, but I don't know. <laughs> God redeems Jerusalem, Isaiah 52. And when we look at the news, it just doesn't look like it. It's no end in sight to this trouble in Jerusalem. And the way things are looking right now, friends, the third intifada is not far off. The third intifada is not far off. When this time comes, this difficult time, don't be shaken. Don't be fearful. Don't lose hope. This is all in alignment with the word of God. 
a season of chastisement, of trouble is coming, and we will all be affected by it. This is not just about Israel. This isn't just about Jacob's trouble, how we want to pin it just on Jacob. No, no. We're in this together to the end. Till the end. We and the Jews are in this together until the end. Yes, you heard that right. So, best to get prepared, isn't it? Awake, awake, put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. The holy city. Hmm. For the uncircumcised and the unclean shall no longer come to you, which is telling me, for them to no longer come to you means that they are coming to her. Yeah, logically. Shake yourself in the dust which is a cursed position, from the position of being in a cursed state. Remember the Lord cursed the serpent. On his belly he will go eating dust. The dust is reminiscent of being in a, a cursed state. Shake yourself from the dust. Arise. Sit down, O Jerusalem. He is talking about Jerusalem. How can we make it to be anything else? Loose yourself from the bonds of your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Imagine a woman with bonds around her neck held captive, O daughter of Zion. Who are the captors? The Lord is using the Islamic nations today. <clears throat> to keep Jerusalem, the daughter of Zion, in bonds. For thus says the Lord, you have sold yourselves for nothing, and you shall be redeemed without money. For thus says the Lord God, basically Jerusalem's been in a pizza. <laughs> My people went down at first into Egypt to dwell there, and he gives this whole beautiful narrative of what happened. He gives a history lesson, what they did, why they did it and what God does and why he does it. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who bring good news, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, I'm raising my voice now, I know, your God reigns, hallelujah. Even though it looks like all hope is gone, and there's no end in sight to this trouble, to this murder, to this bloodshed, to this violence, to the terrorism. To the abortion that goes on there, to the LGBT parading themselves, to the, all the wickedness. Proclaim this salvation. Say to Zion, your God reigns. It's not over till it's over. Your watchmen shall lift up their voices. I'm a watchman. Are you a watchman, you guys? I'm not watching everything on the world news. Absolutely not. And I have no desire to. And I have no intention to be a watchman of the news. I'm a watchman for the Lord. And I have so much that I need to catch up with, friends. Lord, have mercy on me. Please forgive me, my father. That I get weary, I get lazy, I get overburdened, I get pulled left, right and centre. I'm always multitasking and I'm not good at multitasking. It's not my strength. Please forgive me, Father. Please help me to recover. Recover me, Lord. Quicken me in my spirit. You know, we try to tick all the boxes. Whoever said we were supposed to tick all the boxes? No. There's only one box that needs ticking. Make yourself available to the Lord. Tick that box. Your watchmen shall lift up their voices. With their voices they shall sing together. For they shall see eye to eye when the Lord brings back Zion. <laughs> this is a miracle. You know, what? I thought it was over for Zion. Like it's dead and buried and over. Oh, no, 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 no. The Lord our God is in the habit of bringing dead things back to life. <laughs> Lazarus, come out. Lazarus, come forth. <laughs> dead bones will rise, friends. There have been the forming. 
Break forth into singing, into joy. Sing together, you waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord has made bare his holy arm. The Lord Jesus Christ, glorious. In the eyes of all the nations. <laughs> and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Oh my goodness, you guys. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I'm really restraining myself. <laughs> we glory and we glory in the Lord. This is what it means to do that, right? Please tell me it is. Depart, depart. Go out from there. Touch no unclean thing. Go out from the midst of her. Be clean. Yeah, get out from Arabia. Get out from the Abraham Accords. Leave them to the Babylonian ways. You are not of Babylon, Israel. You, are, you don't belong to Babylon, Zion. Come out of her. Touch no unclean thing. Get out from the midst of her. Be clean, you who bear the vessels of the Lord. Wow, what a ministry. This ministers to me right now. You who bear the vessels of the Lord. We've got to be mindful. We are vessels. We've got to be mindful of where we are. What we're doing. Are we touching unclean things? The Lord wants to use us as vessels. But he won't be able to if we're tainted. We've got to ask him to cleanse us continually with the blood of Jesus. Prepare us. Mould us. Shape us. Fashion us according to your purposes, O Lord my God. Break us if you have to and start all over again. You know, the Lord will find another vessel. He has no problem doing that. He will find another vessel. But his desire is to use us. For you shall not go out with haste. What happened to me today? <laughs> I don't know. Nor go by flight, for the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. Here we go. Du -du -du -du, drum roll, please. Sobering message coming. Here comes the Messiah of Israel. This is how he does it. All the glorious scriptures, friend, do you wonder, like, well, how's he going to do it? you like, I want to know practically, Lord, how do you actually do it practically? But... We've got to understand the spiritual to understand the practical, right? This is how he does it. This is how the future of Zion will become glorious. It's down to the one saviour, Jesus Christ. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. Just as many were astonished at you, so his visage was marred more than any man. And his fall more than the sons of men. So he shall sprinkle many nations. The sprinkling is um, referring to the old covenant language of the temple sacrifices where the blood was to be sprinkled on the people to sanctify them. So there's this word, sprinkle many nations. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you for your blood. Sprinkle us, oh God. Sanctify us as we submit ourselves to your rulership. We submit under your mighty hand, O God. Kings shall shut their mouths at him. For what had not been told them, they shall see. And what they had not heard, they shall consider. And here we go, the passion of the Christ. Who has believed our report, Isaiah 53? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. One moment, friends. He understands sorrow. 
He understands grief. A man of sorrows. <laughs> and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. People are not going to understand me. People are going to mock me. One minute she's laughing, the next minute she's crying. This girl's crazy. I know there are those of you who understand because you, you experience what I'm experiencing right now. You You know exactly what's going on. Surely he has borne our griefs. If, I mean, to bear the grief of the whole world. A man of sorrows indeed he was. And carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken. We thought God had judged him for being wicked. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But that wasn't the case though, was it friends? God did judge him, bruise him, strike him. People esteemed that it was God because he was, he might have been someone who did wrong and he's bearing the consequences. No, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Hear this, O Israel, the Lord your God, your Messiah is your perfect lamb of God, your perfect sin, sinless sacrifice. Look to him and be saved. The line of the tribe of Judah. The chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. This is the problem of the human condition. Right here. All we like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. That's iniquity. To go and do your own thing is you are in rebellion. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who would declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken. And the one to go now, make deals with the Abraham Accords. They're doing a deal with death, a covenant with death, and they will pay heavily for it. The price that they will pay will be a heavy price. Let me tell you that. The Abraham Accords. But it's okay. There's hope. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Always remember that. It's not all doom and gloom. It is for a season. But we have to look to the good. We've got to look to the light. We've got to look to the hope. We have to. Otherwise we'll go crazy with grief. And with fear. And with anxiety. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief and you make his soul an offering for sin. His soul was made an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labour of his soul and be satisfied. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, O oh God. Please save our loved ones. Let's pray to the Lord. Please, Lord, Father God, according to the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ, according to the offering of his soul for sin, please be satisfied to bring your redemption, your salvation to our families, our loved ones, those who are still lost in their rebellion, in their blindness, groping, trying to find God in the darkness. Please reveal your truth. Father in heaven, reveal your son to them, that the Lord Jesus might receive the reward of his labour and be satisfied. In Jesus' name, Amen. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. 
glorious. Isn't this glorious? Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great. He shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out his soul unto death. He is found worthy, you see. He was numbered with the transgressors and he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Now we're going to get even more glorious now. Buckle up, you guys. Buckle up. Sing, O oh barren, you who have not born. Break forth into singing and cry loud, you who have not laboured with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman. I believe this is referring to Israel in the Old Covenant when she was betrothed or married to her Lord, her God at Mount Sinai. But this woman who has not born, who has not laboured with child, will have more children than the married woman is the future glorious Church of God, Jew and Gentile together. The new Jerusalem, the holy city, is made up of both of us, Jew and Gentiles. The foundation and the walls built on the apostles and the tribes. We will be given a new name. This is the wonderful children of Zion, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent. Is bigger, basically, larger than the original let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you shall expand to the right and to the left. And your descendants will inherit the nations. You see, the promised Abraham. Remember, we go back to Abraham. The promise to Abraham, I will make you a father of many nations, is going to be fulfilled. Look how long it took. But in God's eyes... One day is like a thousand years. <laughs> oh, Lord, you're so wonderful. You're so wonderful, Lord. Oh, you're so patient, Lord. And do not fear, for you will not be ashamed, neither be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame. For you will forget the shame of your youth and will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. The divorce. The Lord God divorced Israel. Remember. <clears throat> For your maker is your husband. I have done videos on that. They're very old. You'll have to go back and check in history. I mean, these are three years old. How, how long have I been on YouTube? Four years? So this is as long as that. So you'll have to go back. I've done videos on it. If you want me to do them again, let me know in the comments. Absolutely heart-wrenching beautiful message i mean just glorious i mean amazing what the lord has been through to save his people the price he has paid oh my lord for your maker is your husband the lord of hosts is his name and your redeemer is the holy one of israel he is called the god of the whole earth to my muslim listener look I know it sounds like the God of Israel is just the God of Israel and you hate that. But he's the God of the whole earth. He chose the people to reveal himself through. They let him down. The Messiah was to come through. The Messiah came through, through a holy bloodline. He was revealed and he's always got his arms stretched out to reason, to plead. And now we, as ministers of his, are pleading with you all the time. Come, be reconciled to God. Where there seems to be no way, he made a way. You see? For the Lord has called you, like a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, like a youthful wife when you were refused, says your God. You see, Israel must know today. There are those who are still boastful in their arrogance, thinking that they can, by the arm of the flesh, satisfy righteousness. They can't, not according to God's standards. But there must be those amongst them that realise their depravity, the state of absolute desperation. 
I believe the Lord is speaking to those. For a mere moment I have forsaken you. But with great mercies I will gather you. With a little wrath I hid my face from you for a moment. But, here comes the but, with everlasting kindness I will have mercy on you, says the Lord your Redeemer. For this is like the waters of Noah to me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah would no longer cover the earth, so I have sworn that I would not be angry with you. This is Bible prophecy. This is Bible prophecy. To understand these scriptures about the Lord's dealings with Israel is to understand the end. What is going to happen? You see, it eliminates so many things that we get confused over. Who's who's Babylon the Great? Who's the Beast? Who's the Harlot? Right? This eliminates it all. It's very clear the purpose that God has for his people. And this place will be a glorious city one day. Holy city. Glorious city. Full of praise and fame in the earth. But we've got to understand it's a double-edged sword. His kindness will never be departed from them. For the mountain shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has mercy on you. He's a merciful God. Oh, you afflicted one, tossed with tempest and not comforted. And look what he says here. I mean, this is amazing. He's describing the new Jerusalem. The glorious city. It's fascinating that the city in the future will be called New Jerusalem. <laughs> Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Tossed with tempest and not comforted. Behold, I will lay your stones with colourful gems and lay your foundations with sapphires. This is the new Jerusalem, you guys. Is first mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter 54. And we read about it in the book of Revelation, chapter 21 and chapter 22. Amazing! I will make your pinnacles of rubies, your gates of crystal, and all your walls of precious stones. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, dear Jesus, for making this possible. None of this would have been possible without the sacrifice of Jesus. You know that. This is how it was made possible, through his sacrifice. He's conquered. He's a victor. He's already got the victory. There's nothing left to do. He's just going to return and declare it in the open, physically. In the spirit, it's already done. It is done. It is finished. In righteousness you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression for you shall not fear. Hallelujah. Look at this because right now they're surrounded by fear and terror. You shall be far from oppression for you shall not fear. And from terror for it shall not come near you. Indeed they shall surely assemble but not because of me. Whoever assembles against you shall fall for your sake. We're going to go into chapter 55. This is amazing. Friends, I don't know how much more I can read. <laughs> I've got more to go through. Let me go to the ones that are specifically mentioning the glorious future of this place. <clears throat> Salvation for the Gentiles, absolutely. Glorious. Israel's irresponsible leaders, you see? You see the double-edged sword? The chastisement, the judgments will come because they are in rebellion. But when the repentance comes, then the redemption comes. Okay, 60. Let's go to 62, the one that I've been trying to get to. Gentiles bless Zion. Okay. We'll go to the next one. I'm just, I've just realised, I'm mindful now how long it will be for me to <laughs> read them what will be of hours. And it's impossible for me to upload such a long video. It will take all day because of the content, the, the you know, the, the size of the file for when I have to upload it. The good news of salvation. Okay, tell you what. 
let's read from okay yeah I should have gone straight to 62 Zion for Zion's sake I will not hold my peace and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest the Lord is saying this right until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as the lamp that burns. Can I just say something? This is one of the main reasons why I get attacked um, in the comments and just I get harassed by certain Muslims. Certain Muslims will email me, harass me, threaten me, whatever. This is one of the main reasons why. Well, there's two. One, one is I'm ex-Muslim, right, obviously. The second reason... Apparently, according to them, I'm a Zionist. How can you, being a former Muslim, brag and keep bragging about Zion? How how despicable of you. You're vile. You're a sellout. You're a paid Zionist. I get, I get accused of all these things, friends. But this is one of the main reasons. And it, it just goes to show, this is the main reason why the Lord has given me this fire for, for Jerusalem, for Zion. When I, when I do Bible studies. You see, where the, where the Lord is using you the most, or where, where the instrument is more effective, there's, there, that's where the attacks come, isn't it? You know what I mean? <laughs> I, don't get, I don't receive death threats talking about Bible prophecy, but when I mention Islam in Bible prophecy, that's when it all gets a little crazy. Oh, Hallelujah. We are thankful in all things. Pray for me though, please. Keep me in prayer. <clears throat> Until a righteousness goes forth as brightness about Zion, Jerusalem's sake. Her salvation as a lamp that burns. The Gentiles shall see your righteousness. We're going to witness the righteousness of Jerusalem. Don't look like that right now, does it? I know, I know, I know, I understand. And all the kings your glory, you shall be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord will name. Wow. You shall also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no longer be termed forsaken. The Lord understands rejection. He understands even when his people are rejected. He understands when you are rejected, when I am rejected. He's a God who understands everything and empathises with us. He has compassion. He has mercy. Nor shall your land any more be termed desolate, but you shall be called Hephzephah and your land Buela, for the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married for as a young man marries a virgin, so shall your sons marry you. As the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. The God of Israel, the Lord Jesus Christ. I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. Here we go. This was the verse that I received this morning out of the blue. The, it's like... The word of the Lord came to me this morning and said, I have set watchmen on your walls at Jerusalem. It was like this. They shall never hold their peace day or night. You who make mention of the Lord do not keep silent and give him no rest till he establishes, until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. This was my reminder this morning. Okay. The Lord is so good to me, friends. He's so wonderful. He always checks on me. He keeps me in check, in balance. Oh, you're talking way too much about this. Come back and he reminds me where I need to go. So, those of you who've been watching my videos and you're loving all the content, thank you so much. I want to let you know I'm going to be focused a lot more now on Bible prophecy and Jerusalem and Zion and Israel to bring it to your attention. So we are watchful. 
we are watchmen on the walls watching what's going on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He's made me a good watchman. I want to continue. I don't want to be cast away. I don't want to be um, put aside. I want the Lord to say, okay, you were faithful in that. I'll give you more. I don't want the Lord to be like, okay, I'm done with you now. I want to stay sharp instrument in his hand. And for that, I've got to respect my time wisely. <sighs> the Lord has sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength. Surely I will no longer give your grain as food for your enemies. Why should Israel grow and sow and the enemies come and eat? No, this is not going to happen anymore. And the sons of the foreigner shall not drink your new wine for which you have laboured, but those who have gathered it shall eat it and praise the Lord. That's righteous judgment, righteousness. Those who have brought it together shall drink it in my holy courts. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people, build up, build up the highway. Oh, and I've got the perfect song, the perfect song. I first came across this song many years ago when I was back home in London. I was at Revelation TV Studios, which is a Christian TV channel. I was there and um, I got acquainted with this couple who are Messianic Jews. Anyway, they sing some wonderful worship songs and some of their songs are glorious. <laughs> and when this word of the Lord came to me this morning, I was immediately reminded of that song. I thought, I've got to share it with my subscribers my listeners i've got to share it with them today they're gonna to love it so hold on okay i'm gonna play it in a moment go through go through the gates prepare the way for the people build up build up the highway take out the stones lift up a banner for the peoples indeed the lord has proclaimed to the end of the world say to the daughter of zion come on now all together surely your salvation is coming Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. Let's do that together. Let's read it together. I'm serious. I know you're watching me on live chat. Read this aloud with me together, wherever you are sitting. Come on. One, two, three. Indeed, the Lord has proclaimed to the end of the world, say to the daughter of Zion, surely, your salvation is coming. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And you shall be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. How long have I been going, friends? Let's move on to Zechariah. Chapter 14, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. The Lord wept over you, Jerusalem. He had tears, he shed, he had broken heart for you, Jerusalem. He said, you're not going to see him again until, until the day comes when you recognize, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. When you welcome him with open arms, that's when your Messiah will return. Let's read, friends, Zechariah 14. Behold, the day of the Lord is coming. And your spoil will be divided in your midst. For I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. The city shall be taken, the houses rifled and the women ravished. Half the city shall go into captivity. But the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Pray for the remnant. The ones are going to be spared. You know what I'm saying? What's the remnant? Well, when you make yourself a dress, you have the garment, right? The material. You cut out what you need and you have the leftover, the remnants. These are the remnants, friends, who are going to make it. Just a handful. Considering how many there ought to have been. But the Lord is always sifting his people. He's always sifting us, the church. And I pray this video is a sifting video to sift out all those who are against Zion, against Jerusalem, who keep telling me, Sonia, don't you know Jerusalem is the harlot? 
God is done with Jerusalem. I pray this video is a sifting tool <laughs> to sift out all those who are opposing the purposes of God. <clears throat> then the Lord will go forth. Then. So all this will happen, right? The Lord will gather the nations to fight against Jerusalem. The city will be taken, friends. The city will be taken. Read the news. We're headed in that direction. The third intifada is most likely going to kick off. It might even happen this year. It's going to happen. The houses will be attacked. The women will be attacked. The city, half of it, will go into captivity. But there will be a remnant. Don't forget. Then, when it looks like all hope is lost, then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations. Israel, Jerusalem will be on its knees, desperate. And that is when the Lord's going to come. Well, they're going to call upon the name of the Lord and then he will come. The Lord will give to them the spirit of grace and supplication that they might call upon him. He even gives them the ability to do it by the help of the Holy Spirit. The Lord will go forth and fight against those nations. <sighs> As he fights in the day of battle. And in that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives. Just so you know, this is actually going to happen. Which faces Jerusalem on the east. Because it's East Jerusalem that they want to claim for themselves. So we know East Jerusalem will be invaded. Okay. We don't need no geopolitical analyst in the Middle East to tell us that. The Bible already told us that. And the Mount of Olives shall be split in two. Hallelujah. The Lord is here. From east to west, making a very large valley. Half the mountain shall move toward the north and half of it toward the south. Right. Thus the Lord my God will come. And all the saints with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Oh, Lord Jesus, please, Lord, can I be one of them? <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. For, I'm, I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to come with you, Lord. It shall come to pass <laughs> in that day <laughs> that there will be no light. The lights will diminish. It shall be one day which is known to the Lord, neither day nor night. But at evening time, it shall happen that it will be light. Huh. And in that day it shall be that living waters shall flow from Jerusalem. Yes. Oh yes. That very place that is going to be trodden down on, destroyed, invaded. The Lord is going to redeem it, restore it. Half of them toward the eastern sea, half of them toward the western sea. In both summer and winter it shall occur and the Lord shall be king over all the earth. Hallelujah. Did it all. In that day it shall be. Oh, we're looking forward to that day. That day. The Lord is one and his name one. Hallelujah. Shema Israel. Glorious. The other scripture, Joel 3, I want us to read from this portion here. Oh, I'll get through this as quickly as I can. Joel chapter 3, verse 1. For behold, in those days and at that time when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations. I will bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat and I will enter into judgment with them there. On account of my people, my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. They have also divided up my land. Great Britain, Great Britain with the British mandate. I'm sorry to let you know, you're in a lot of trouble. Because whoever was involved in dividing up his land, God's land, is in a lot of trouble. And that includes you, Britain. They have cast lots for my people. They have given the boys the payment for a harlot and sold a girl for one that they may drink. Indeed, what have you to do with me, O Ty and Sidon, or the coast of Philistia? Will you retaliate against me? And the Lord is saying he will retaliate their fire back on their own heads. I've read this many times. I want you to scroll down and read this bit here. 
multitudes, multitudes, verse 14, in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision, the sun and moon will grow dark, and the stars will diminish their brightness, what a day this will be, this will be a terrifying day, a day of gloominess and darkness, and right then the Lord will appear, the Lord also will roar from Zion, and utter his voice from Jerusalem, <clears throat> Grand zero. The heavens and earth will shake, but the Lord will be a shelter for his people. His people, friends, will have nobody. Do you understand? This is where they're headed. They're headed to a place in their history. <clears throat> One moment. They're heading to a place in their history. That they are going to be completely alone, utterly isolated and desperate. And you know, think about it in our own personal life. When we are completely desperate, that is usually when people tend to go on their knees, isn't it? And that's when the Lord comes through. But nowadays people are just not desperate enough for God. <sighs> We've got to get desperate enough for him, friends. But the Lord will be shelter for his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So you shall know that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then Jerusalem shall be holy. Yeah, because when the king is here, of course Jerusalem will be holy, because he's the one who sanctifies us. And no alien shall ever pass through her again. The only way the aliens can pass through is if they confess Jesus they declare him to be Lord when every knee bows when every tongue confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord then they can be attached united to the God of Israel hallelujah the other verse I want us to read is in Ezekiel oh friends I'm going to be a long time friends. <laughs> i tell you what let me go to Zephaniah Listen to this, friends. It starts off, Zephaniah chapter 3, the wickedness of Jerusalem, the subheading. <coughs> Excuse me. Woe to her who is rebellious and polluted to the oppressing city. She has not obeyed his voice. She has not received correction. She has not trusted in the Lord. She has not drawn near to her God. And so because of that, her princes in their midst are roaring lions. Her judges are evening wolves that leave not a bow until morning. Her prophets are insolent, treacherous people. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. They have done violence to the Lord. The Lord, the Lord is righteous in her midst. He will do no unrighteousness. Every morning he brings his justice to light. He never fails. But the unjust knows no shame. I have cut off nations. Their fortresses are devastated. I have made their streets desolate with none passing by. Their cities are destroyed. There is no one, no inhabitant. I said, surely you will fear me. You will receive instruction so that her dwelling would not be cut off. Despite everything for which I punished her. But they rose early and corrupted all their deeds. Therefore, here we go, the conclusion of the matter. Therefore, wait for me, says the Lord, until the day I rise up for plunder. My determination is to gather the nations to my assembly of kingdoms, to pour on them my indignation. All my fierce anger, all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Wow. This is his purpose, his intention. He's made it clear. For then I will restore to the peoples their pure language, that they may call on the name of the Lord to serve him with one accord. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my worshippers, the daughter of my dispersed ones, shall bring my offering. In that day you shall not be ashamed for any of your deeds in which you transgress against me. For then I will take away from your midst those who rejoice in your pride, and you shall no longer be haughty in my holy mountain. 
I will leave in your midst a meek and humble people. This is the remnant. This is describing the remnant. The remnant will be a meek and humble people. And they shall trust in the name of the Lord. The remnant of Israel shall do no unrighteousness and speak no lies. Nor shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. For they shall feed their flocks and lie down. And no one shall make them afraid. No more terrorism in the land of Israel. Sing, O daughter of Zion, and shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. Why? You might ask. Well, <laughs> read that. <laughs> the Lord has taken away your judgments. He has cast out your enemy. The King of Israel, the Lord is in your midst. You shall see disaster no more. I think that deserves a rejoicing, a crying out, a shouting out, O daughter of Zion. <laughs> In that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, Zion, let not your hands be weak. I want to be one of those people. Do you want to be one of those people, friends? Do not fear, Zion, let not your hands be weak. The Lord your God, in your midst, the mighty one, he will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. I will gather those who sorrow over the appointed assembly who are among you, to whom its reproach is a burden. Behold, at that time I will deal with all I will deal with all who afflict you. I will save the lame and gather those who are driven out. I will appoint them for praise and fame. <laughs> In every land where they were put to shame. Islamic world, are you listening? Western world, are you listening? At that time I will bring you back. Even at the time I gather you. For I will give you fame and praise. He said it twice. He's going to appoint his people, friends. For praise and for fame. And again. For I will give you fame and praise. Among all the peoples of the earth. When I return your captives before your eyes, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh my goodness. Okay, friends. I'm going to be doing a prophecy update, like I mentioned, and also a recap on the Messiah 2030, because I think the feedback response was great on the video that I did. I'm going to be doing those two videos. So this is just a reminder for me to mention it before I close the stream. So do you see now, friends, the glorious future of Israel Zion? relation to the end times what the lord is going to do and i didn't even mention ezekiel or the book of revelation but there's so much more to say <laughs> i gotta be mindful how much am i going to share with you but you've got a very good idea now largely we read from the book of isaiah mostly you need to do your own homework and read the rest of the book but you see when we read such news all right after raid, police go on high alert in Jerusalem, surroundings for Purim. Every time there's a, a holiday, this is a, a time for high alert. <clears throat> you see on the archway there, there says Allah and there says Muhammad. Blasphemy, right? Ultra-Orthodox Jewish men left pray as Israeli police officers guard Israeli how is this a Jewish state? You're actually appeasing the Islamic world. Israel is an appeaser. Sorry, Israel. The, the Lord is, does not like this. I'm telling you, he does not like what's going on here. He's so angry. He is so angry about what's happening. He's heartbroken. But we read the scriptures. We know it's clear what is going to happen and what the Lord is going to do. You see, this is why we need to go through all those scriptures to have a perspective on this. So, I was reading, <clears throat> ultra-Orthodox Jewish men left, on this left side, pray as the Israeli police guard the entrance to the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem's holy city. Who's in control of Jerusalem? I'll ask you that again. I asked you that before. Who's in control of Jerusalem? <clears throat> in the political sense, geopolitical sense. 
It's not the Jews, is it? It's going to stay this way, do you understand? Until they take over East Jerusalem. The word of God is clear. When the Lord returns, he's going to be facing Jerusalem on the east. East Jerusalem is what the Islamic world want. And they're going to take it. They're going to think they've achieved their goal. And then Jesus is going to show up and it's, a, it's going to be game over. Right? Okay. We pray for the Islamic world. Pray for them. That their eyes will be opened. Lord, help us. I pray the Lord will raise more watchmen. And I'm going to go and play that song. Where's that song? Are you ready? Are you ready, my darling friends? I hope that was very edifying. I hope it was a blessing to you. And to be honest, I'm going to hurry up and play the song because I can't wait to sing. <laughs> I'll be back again soon, friends. Pray for me. Don't forget. I need all the prayers I can get. Hallelujah. So this is that song. On your wars, O Jerusalem. Hopefully it's loud enough because I like a good volume when I'm worshipping the Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Sing with me. You may not have heard of this before. This is the channel. Hallelujah. On your walls of Jerusalem. <clears throat> actually dancing here friends <laughs>
That was so good. I think I want to play another one. <laughs> Friends. I'm going to play another, play another one. This is them. So this is Barry and Batia. Let's play that one as well. Let me go to the beginning. Do I have it all set up? Let's see how long it would take for it to... What do you think of that? Wasn't that wonderful? Marvellous. That's literally Isaiah 62. On your walls of Jerusalem, I have posted watchmen. Let's play this one and then I will, I promise I'll end the stream. Here you go. On your walls of Jerusalem, I have said watchmen, I have said watchmen. to sing songs that are scriptural, right? Hallelujah. Thank you for being with me this far.